Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. We have a nice uh, turnout today. Um, we have some notable guests today. We have our Mayor Diana Gaza. And we have um, our new city manager. Would you like to stand up? If you haven't met it, it's Henrietta Turner. Yeah. Um, we have Larry Wiley, Commissioner Prison Paul. Lindsay Thorne, who is um, the architect uh, working on this whole stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Jim Miller, Councilman Jim Miller. And today <coughs> we have um, Judge Marvin Quinney and Howard Berger that are going to talk to about the Certificates of Obligation. And there's been lots of talk and lots of newspaper articles, and uh, you're going to get it straight from the horse's mouth. So, Judge, would you like to come up and start? That's an expression. We're going to teach him some other ones. <laughs> I, I'm, already, I'm already fixing to get those. <laughs> Well, first of all, I appreciate the opportunity to come here and speak today. It's not often I get to speak with one of my Republican friends here. <laughs> Howard. No, that's kind of one thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, people realize that uh, I ran as a Republican and Howard, Mr. Democrat of Wilson County. And uh, we're here for the same thing today. And, uh, you know, I. I just hope that people will put politics aside and do something for the good of our county. We've been planning this. Well, let me start with a little history to start with. The courthouse had cracks come into the north uh, west side of it. We had it tested, uh, and uh, it was deteriorating. It was a safety hazard. So we moved out of it. We was fortunate enough to purchase a school that we're now occupying that we didn't have to be in every corner of different places in order to carry on the county business. We, we was fortunate that the school worked with us. On, we had worked with the school on a previous project uh, where the alternative center is now. The county deeded that school, that five acres, the back whenever that, that comes about. So in turn, we was able to buy this block of buildings and the half block for a million seventy-five thousand dollars and uh, so as things progressed, the courthouse, uh, we got involved with it, and we had outgrown the courthouse years ago in, in reality. We have district court to carry on. We'd outgrown the courthouse, and, and in, in uh, reconstructing the courthouse to make it where it could be made to be uh, safe for the court, in other words, uh, security purposes, it would have taken a complete changing it up because the uh, the way it, it's set up, you can't you know, bring people in. So anyway, all three projects basically amount to the fact that in the uh, west side of the facility that we're in now, the cafeteria would be converted into a courtroom with a salad court and holding cells. The district clerk's office, the adult probation, and the DA's office will be all housed in the same building. Now, what we hear from different people is, well, I'm for this one, but I'm against this one. And we got the historical courthouse there that will be used for county operations. It'll be the commissioner's court, the county court, and the county officers will move back into it. The district court will move into that facility, and the building that we're occupying now will become the library. Uh, where the uh, adult probation office is now, uh, the Historical Society will utilize that for archives, which is now leased from the newspaper. The, uh, we've had, since uh, over a year at least, on every commissioner's court agenda, we've had uh, all three annexes based on there for public comment or whatever. Had very little participation in that time. We had one nighttime meeting 
the only individual that showed up at the nighttime meeting was opposed to fixing the old courthouse. I'm for the library. You'll find people the other way. I'm for the I'm, I'm for the courthouse, but I'm against the library. <coughs> the fact of the matter is, it's like fitting one of your children against other. All three of them are needed. All three of them are vital parts of the growth of this county. And that courthouse has been sitting with a fence around it now for two years. And it's, if you look at all the signs that come in Floresville, it, it's the centerpiece of Floresville. Exactly. And uh, it's really, uh, we've got an opportunity to, the interest rate is as low as they're going to ever be. You just, they're not, they're not going to be any lower. Concrete and steel is on the way up. And eventually, if any of you have served on a district court jury in the, in the past, well, since we've, we've been in the situation we're in, it's out at the criminal justice facility in a courtroom that's been devised for holding JP court. And it, it, it's a real mess to deal with. So I'm going to stop here. Well, first of all, let me talk about financing a little bit. We paid the jail bond off last year. We, we had an opportunity to refinance it when interest was lower. We was able to pay it off. So uh, the uh, we had one individual that had sat in the courtroom for all these things, and he was very much for the project. And uh, I got word the other day that he was very upset because he figured out that his taxes was going to go up $3,600 a year. So I called him up, and by the time I called him, he had called the auditor, and his taxes was going to go up $36 a year. He had used the two cents of two dollars and so forth. But he was still for it. After, after being there, he was still for it, knowing that that was going to happen. But the, uh, and the thing that, there's no guarantee uh, our tax rate fell this year because of uh, the jail bond being paid off and, of course, the new add-ons such as the oil industry. And there's no guarantee, but we're getting a thousand acre rail yard at the north part of the county. And prior to that, we didn't have a rail in the county. They ran it a spur from Bear County into the county. So we're getting a thousand acre rail yard that's going to serve the Eagle for Shell. We've got transfer stations and things on the oil industry coming into the south part of the county that's tax base. The oil wells themselves tax base. Each Stockdale, Lavernia, and Floresville industrial park, business parks are all growing and businesses moving in at a rapid rate. So there's, there's more tax base, so chances are your taxes are going to go down. I can't, I can't stand here and tell you your taxes are going to go down even with the building this. But they are. You know. And I, at that I'm going to turn it over to Howard and then maybe we can answer some questions. I'd rather answer the questions than stand here and talk because I want everybody, we need each of you to get out and get people in to vote for this thing because it's probably the most important vote that we'll ever make in this area that, that'll have so much impact because it's a small election, people are not gonna be out, and we just really need it, and, and I think all of you will be able to take pride in the county of what, what's going to happen. Thank you, Judge. Again, as the judge said, thank you to Phil and uh, Susan and all the folks of the Chamber of Commerce for having us here. I'm going to ask you if you could just pass those papers and pass it around. That's a little flyer about the um, project. My particular interest in this project is about the library, uh, but I'm going to talk in, sort of in general about the, the whole project. It is, a, uh, it is an interconnected web. And I think the first thing to appreciate about the plan that's before you, uh, that we're, we're asking for your support on the certificates obligation vote, is that it solves multiple problems at a very, very low cost comparatively. Several years ago, some friends and I got together and formed a group then called the Library Launchers, now called the Wilson County Education Foundation, that was designed to try to figure out a way to build a new library. And let me just start by saying, from looking at that, we looked at pretty much every possibility we could come up with. Okay, we looked at building a brand new one. We looked at repurposing old buildings. We looked at expanding the current library. We looked at everything. Of the least expensive option we could find, 
was to repurpose an old building and figured that that would cost us uh, a little over four, maybe as much as five million. That would be the cheapest we found for the library itself. The current plan, the current plan is to take and give the library three times as much space as we currently have and to build in a half a million in furniture, fixtures, and equipment and to do all of that for less than two million. So if you're saying, boy, you're spending way too much money, let's start with that. To do anything else that we look at would be double what we're getting for right now for a library, three times the size. A reality check. We are a growing county, period. If we're a growing county, we have to grow with it. The county facilities have to grow. The infrastructure has to grow. We've seen that in the schools. We've seen that in the hospitals. We've seen that in, in other facilities. If the county is growing as much as it is, then we have to have the infrastructure to deal with it. We are out of space. I'm, I know courtrooms. I'm a lawyer. I try to stay out of them. But uh, even given that, I know courtrooms. We were, that courthouse was really too small 20 years ago. 20 years ago. When I was at the tank going up into that courtroom every court day, it was really too small. Lord knows it is now. 20, you know, 20 years ago when we had too much court, we were in the library, we were in the jail and the JP courtroom, we were upstairs in the courtroom and downstairs in the courtroom. I can remember trying to arrange to be in four different places to answer four different dockets on the same day. That courtroom was too small 20 years ago. It is now. If we're a lot, if we are a growing county, the infrastructure has to grow with it. It's pure itself. This current plan uh, allows for a construction of a criminal justice facility that allows for security because it has the prisoners brought in through a salary court rather than have the prisoners just brought in walking up the stairs of the courtroom like we've all seen a hundred times. It allows for a DA's office and an adult probation office right there next to the district courtroom. And it allows for uh, a reutilization for the structural stability and utilization of, frankly, a beautiful historic courthouse. And it allows my library, our library, to grow to three times its current size. I'm going to just go off on my library for a little bit. We have about 45 to 50,000 people in the county. We had almost 100,000 people come through the library last year. We have about, we checked out about 85,000 uh, materials last year. This is a library that's serving as best it can out of a 5,000 square foot facility. Think about the size of your house. Maybe that's double or three times the size of your house. Think about the size of your house. You're trying to serve a community. You're trying to have uh, almost 100,000 people come through a building double the size, triple the size of your house every year. We literally cannot grow any more in that facility. We literally can't add books. We don't have room to put them. There are books all over the floors that we don't, we can't build shelves. Put them in. We're bursting at the seams. Um, the library is not just for books, it's for a whole lot more than that. We have been engaging in high tech solutions. The library currently has uh, Kindle books that are checked out online. You can, you can check out a book and download it to your Kindle. We have, uh, we have expanded our computer terminals from five terminals to 15 terminals, and that's overwhelmed. We need a whole lot more than that, and incidentally, just to stop on that point, this is the Chamber of Commerce. We want people to be employed. We want people to be able to go out and get jobs. We want kids to be able to apply for college. You have most, many, many, many job applications now have to be filed online. You can't walk in and file them. You can't give them a paper copy, they want it online. 
I thought my kids were through college, but I remember going to, you know, getting the kids into college and applying for financial aid. Anybody remember applying to FAFSA? Yep. Yeah, the FAFSA. You can't do the FAFSA on paper. You've got to do it online. If you're low income, you don't, and you want to have access to those things, you've got to have some place to have high speed computer access. It's got to be there. The library is a lot more than just books. It's a community center. It's a place where communally we can gather. And it deserves for that. But it also is a, an inter a technology sphere. It's a technology tool. I live out six miles out of town. If I want to download a book onto my phone so I can listen to it on the way to work, which I do constantly, I can't do it at home without eating up all of my minutes on my plan. So where do I do it? I come into the library and download books on my phone using the library's high-speed access, using the library's Wi-Fi. That's just sort of one very small piece of what the library serves. We, we have tried to go outside the box. Um, one of the most, one of the best things Nikki has done is to set up a kiosk in Lavernia where you can go rent books out of a kiosk, out of a freestanding vending machine. It's the only one in the state of Texas. We've got it here in Wilson County. It's very cool. To do those kind of things, though, to service a 50,000 person community, we need a bigger facility. This facility and just some of the ways we're saving money on it. We're taking an old <coughs> primary school, we're converting, we're doing some architectural plans to convert it into a library, nice open spaces. We are taking the sidewalk area outside the library, putting up glass walls around it as cheap as it can get, and incorporating that in as an atrium. We're using uh, two old conference or two old uh, classrooms <coughs> and converting them into conference rooms. Gee, that's real hard. You throw a couple, you throw some furniture in there, and boom, you've got a conference room. If you want, you can put carpet in <coughs> and you've got pre-existing conference rooms. This is as financially conservative a plan, I think, as can be done. And we're doing all of this. We're taking care of the district court problem, we're stabilizing and reinvigorating the county courthouse, and we're doing our library, and we're doing all of that for about eight and a half. I think it's a very good plan. And how often will you hear Howard say he's a conservative? Right? <laughs> 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 uh, I call that. <laughs> 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 I'm go away. No more. Just, just, just sure. Uh, the county. Uh, we we come up with a brochure just to put information out, and uh, the library picked it up and did some changes to it with, with our permission and all. And on the uh, very bottom part of it. A couple of things I want to explain that's on there. Uh, they, they took the wording off the ballot, which is important. That, so we took the obligation to elect proposition. The issuance of combination tax and revenue certificate of obligation not to exceed, exceed $8,500,000 to pay for restoration and innovation of the county courthouse renovation, construction, and equipping of Wilson County Annex Number 3 for a criminal justice center, county library, and county offices, renovation and equipment of the existing county library for county offices, construction and equipment of the county animal shelter, construction and improvement of county roads, and the payment for professional services and costs thereof. Now, the two things that I wanted to make an explanation about was County Animal Shelter and the improvement of the roads. Whenever our financial advisor, which has been around since we did the jail, advised us, he said we needed to have a meeting to look for future projects for the county in the event that we run under enough that we need to, to use it. We're not going to run under enough, and the uh, County Animal Shelter is not part of this, but we had to run it the same way that it had been ran in the paper. It'd be nice if all the roads could actually use it, but we can't, we're not going to have this, is not going to go that far. So those two items that's on there, it's on, on there because we had to stay 
within the law as to the way we had ran it originally. Now, as far as the animal shelter is concerned, there have been some of the cities have shown some interest in us doing a project together to address the animal control that can probably, there's probably some avenues of finance that can take care of that without dipping into taxpayers. So, but that's another issue altogether. But I just want to point that out that that's not part of it. And the, uh, the old library building would become Miss Eva Martinez County Clerk's Office, which she's been way under area since, particularly when we have as many land people as we have showing up there. And uh, so at this, are you ready to open it for question? Yeah. Uh, uh, so, any questions that you have, please. Yes, sir. Uh, could you explain the difference between a certificate of obligation and a bond? Thank you. Howard? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. There are two basic kinds of bonds. Well, first off, the CFO Act was passed about 10 years ago, so it's relatively new, about 15 years ago. Um, there are two basic kinds of bonds. One's a revenue bond, where you pledge a particular revenue stream for it, um, and that's not, was never involved here. Uh, the uh, second one's a uh, GO bond, or a general obligation bond, where you actually pass a tax that's dedicated to the payment of a GO bond. That's classically the jail bond, is a, is a general obligation bond, the hospital. How we, how we got the hospital was a general obligation law, uh, where you have a particular tax line on your annual, on your tax bill. Certificates of obligation are another form of debt servicing that's allowed by statute, basically because of the limitations on C, uh, GL bonds and revenue bonds. Uh, and certificates of obligation are issued by the county to Bond, to bond purchasers, to purchasers. And they are paid out of the county's general revenues. Now, in point of fact, the county dedicates money each year to pay them, but they're paid out of the county's general revenues rather than have a specific line item on your tax bill that says this is the jail bond, okay? Uh, the other thing is certificates of obligation. GL bonds have a positive requirement for an election, certificates of obligation have a negative requirement for an obligation. GO bonds, you have to have an election to pass them. Certificates of obligation have a negative. You get a, an, a, a petition filed, such as they did in this situation, <coughs> then you have an election to authorize it. Does that mean that regardless of the outcome of the election, if, if the election, if we vote against the bond, this certificate of obligation, they can't go ahead and do it anyway. They cannot, you, if you cannot, if you vote against this, if the CFOs go down, then the county doesn't get the money okay. to do it. Because I Pure thought that sounded like a loophole to me that no. the voter... The, the county just doesn't get the money. They can't sell the CFOs, so they can't raise the money to do it. One, one thing I, I hope everybody keeps in mind, that the courthouse, criminal justice facility, library, all things that not some, some way out park that for your pleasure or whatever, it's think it's very much needed. And I, I normally, when I'm speaking to a group of people, I try to tell a joke would be funny. There's not a thing in the world funny about this. This is one of the most important votes that we're going to make. It's going to have the greatest impact on our county and most anything that can happen. And uh, we would already been down the road with it had we... Uh, we, we was forced to an election by a petition, and there was a lot of people that were misled on different things as to the reason they signed the petition, such as the animal shelter and so forth like that. And uh, it wasn't that we was trying to put anything by the public. It was the fact that if the interest rate goes up a cent between now and that time, it can cost a billion dollars. And so, but the financial advisor did say that, he, at that time he had said that he thought Probably it was going to go up, and it did look like that. All your everything you see on a national level that it would. But he since said that he died very seriously did because the American economy is not in as good a shape as it was being reported that it was in. So 
it, it's, it's uh, but I, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're if you're thinking of economics, this is this is the most economical way that this is going to be achieved, and it, it brings a great deal of clash to our county of uh, the things that we the way we are able to uh, deal with the court system, the library. One thing is a minor thing, but it, it, it kind of got a nice taste to it uh, in a way to me. Our extension agent, uh, Ryan Davis, asked the other day about using a couple of classrooms over there for some of his classes for uh, insecticides and things, uh, herbicides and uh, the classes that he gave because he had to move his equipment from one facility to another when he gave those classes. But along with that, he said that he wanted to establish a master gardener group and that area in between the buildings uh, they want to develop that and, and I thought how neat you know you have your 4-H'ers there you know for those classes you got your library right there and, and with that area to, the buildings go all the way around it would be a secured area and, and uh, it, it, like I said that's not that big but it's really a nice touch to it. and I think did already say that if, yeah, Ms. Eva would be moving into it. so uh, any other questions? <clears throat> As you may know, I've been working on the Falls Falls growth plan for about eight months now. And <clears throat> the courthouse in the historic part of downtown is paramount in, in the growth of Falls Do you have a contingency plan? Because the courthouse has to be the number one to get prepared. If the bond doesn't pass, I hope it does. Do you have a contingency plan maybe to use the rainy day fund to repair the courthouse? Yes. Uh, we we went ahead and, and budgeted it from the, uh, oh, uh, <coughs> what's the term uh, for the money that's with the state? Uh, oh, the, um, if you hadn't asked me, I'd have told you to. Textbook? Textbook, yes. Uh, Textbook. That, uh, we, we made arrangements to finance the stabilization of the courthouse, not the remodeling of it, but the stabilization of it, so it can be reopened. Uh, uh, Mr. Thorne, Lindsey Thorne, is an architect on all three projects, and he's been in contact with the Historical Society. Now we have, we've, we've applied for historical grants before. They do have a fund for uh, emergency fund for like the stabilization, and it's very, very much depleted. But I, Senator Van de Pew sits on ACOG with me, and I asked her the other day about calling them and seeing what she could do there in, in uh, Austin, and she did. And she called me back and said that I think Lindsay had asked for like seven hundred fifty thousand, I believe, and she said that the county, Duval County, is also having some work done. And said it looked like we may be in line to get forty thousand, but we had to put a plan forward. In not, not uh, 400,000. 400, and uh, now I talked to uh, Brittany at Kent, uh, John Kemple's office up there, and she put a call in over there also, and, and uh, they, they basically put on the same page. So $400,000 won't, won't get it, but that's, that doesn't see that. that, that that's something that, and uh, so hopefully that'll go through, and we've got support from our legislatures on that. Now, by the way, I did tell Senator Van Pugh when I talked to her that Senator Zaffarini was our senator and I had not contacted her. It was just a convenient thing with her. She said, I'll call her this evening. I think she called her Senator C. She said, I'll call her this afternoon and said, tell her that it was a, a just an opportune time. So we, we're trying very hard. We've tried very hard to keep it a very open process. Uh, we want everybody to have all the facts and uh, there's nothing hidden from anybody. It's, it's there if you want to see it. And uh, I think it, it, like I said before, it's one of the most important votes that we'll have in our county. To, and, and Floresville has got a real opportunity to be the driver of this. I think this may be some the only contested <coughs> council races or anything in the county. Absentee voting will be there at the office for two weeks. Uh, it's it's uh and and with the courthouse being the centerpiece of downtown and then having the criminal justice facility two or three blocks away, it, 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 it can be a 
really a, a game changer for the city of Floresville. Uh, and uh, so I really, uh, really would request that everybody do everything you can to make it pass because it, it, it has a great deal of, uh, it's going to have influence one way or the other. So. Judge, would you mind clarifying again about the animal shelter when you said that we had to run it anyway like this? What were you speaking about? Well, we ran it in the paper the first time as to that it was part of the, you remember what I said as far as that was part of our uh, financial advisors asking for what plans we had for the future. I'm going to be honest with you. Mr. Wilde has done a great deal of work with the animal shelter thing. I have kicked it down the road as far as I can keep it because it's expensive, you know. Yes. But it's necessary as our county grows and we've got the subdivision and things. And you'd be surprised at how many complaints and things we have. And then, of course, the cities have to deal with it. On, on, and, and if the five entities work together to, to address it, it can be done more economically. You can put a $5 uh, uh, fee on tag, tags now for the animals. So, I mean, it, it's uh, there's, there's ways it can, the cost can be, but we had to run it that way because we ran it originally that way. We can't change it. But on it the out. ballot, it won't refer to that at yes, all. Yes, it will. It will. It will. It will. Oh, that, so that's you're that's saying it had to stay there. You're not taking it out okay. because you originally ran it that way. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. So okay. that cost is within the total cost. No, ma'am. There's no cost no. for it. That, if, <laughs> if there was money left over from the 8.5, 8, 8, 5, 8 and a half million. And where does it state that? It doesn't. He's it's telling you that. You're telling me, you're telling us that five and six will only happen if there's money left over. Right. But where is it going to say that other than you telling us? It's not. Well, then how are people going? Well, that's the reason I'm asking. I'm, that's the reason I'm begging y'all to get out and, and make people understand that. that well, that. but that needs to be stated. In, in the paper or stated somewhere. The legal uh, requirements for publication have already bypassed it. You that, can't legally publish it differently now. And, and along with that question, yeah. Yeah. the main thing is this says cost estimates on each of these. How did you come up with these figures as an estimate? What did you use to put these figures together. I mean, that's what everybody's going to want to know. It's like you're just picking a figure out of the air and sticking them on here because you're saying estimates. But so thing, how the did these figures come about? Okay, back? before he answers you, let me tell you, as I said earlier, we've had open court on this for some for the first year. It's been, it's been okay. on the agenda. Okay. Didn't know that. But it's been there. It's been on the ever agenda. Okay. <laughs> Those uh, plans over there that we were asked to bring today are were came from Thorn, Lindsay Thorn, uh, architect. Oh, good. Okay, so. And uh, then <clears throat> with his expertise in that field and contacting, uh, we've, we've already had, went out for RFQ. We had one company out of Seguin <laughs> bid on it. So okay, I mean, that's another thing I wanted to know. Well, that, there's a lot of information. <laughs> bids put out on this so that you know that there, these figures <laughs> are going to work. There haven't been official bids put out because you can't officially put the bids out. out until it's... They, they have to get estimates right. and the architect gets right. the estimates. Okay. That's, that's where it comes from. Have the uh, old school buildings been... Yes, that's... That, you know, looked uh, at to someone, sure someone mentioned on the website the other day that we had spent $700,000 soft money at, I don't know what salt money is. I'm secret as far as salt money, but that's what it was said. So I asked in court the other day, as Mr. Thorne would explain to us, you know, we we knew it, but for the public to explain, you know, some of the things. The, the slabs have been x rayed. Uh, the courthouse had to have tests run. Uh, the commissioners helped dig. Uh, they had to even drill a well there to test the soils and everything, you know, the courthouse. The school building has also been tested. It's been, it's been tested and, and uh, uh, it's all in there. You, would you like to address any of that? Sure, yes. Um, I just originally, I believe the judge actually is on the record at court where he actually clarified that that 8.5 is for the, the three buildings and if there was any money left over, I believe he clarified that. 
month or so ago, I believe. So it's it's on the record, I believe, if anyone wants to hear that. Okay, but um, but unfortunately, it's the due process of once it's said there, if it, even if it was incorrect, it, it it's it's done and it has to run its course. Um, there's certain procedures you have to do. If you'd like me, I can. I, I mentioned it, which is called. Right, we can go back. I can go back over it. And then we have a group of individuals that have, haven't always been able to the commission's court at the time. Um, we were first contracted to do a, a sort of analytical study of the old courthouse to find out what the problems were and what needs to be done, which is what the first part that we did 18 months ago. We probably spent three months looking at that. We, Commissioner Theo, we actually went and excavated around the areas where that had the worst subsidence and wall damage. Um, we then comprised a team of ourselves, a forensic um, engineering company at Ralston, WG, was Jenny Elsler, um, another structural engineer that we worked with, Lawrence Calvetti in San Antonio, that deals with our forensic work like we have over the years. And so we came up with a plan of how we we're going to try and stabilize the foundation system. Um, again, we presented in court, which I explained what had happened. When they built that courthouse way back when, they basically dug trenches, they threw a little bit of cement and, and stone in the bottom, and they just started building on these strip footings, which were way too inadequate. Um, they're about nine inches deep, That's, and the, the, the wall down below is about four to five wide uh, layers thick, and everything rises from that. Um, over time then, they've had, uh, we found when we were excavating around the foundation that they'd had all fractured clay lines down there, that they put new um, solid bed lines on top. Um, but just through the investigation, we saw two old lines that were fractured and been broken. The way that the old swales were run up against the northwest corner at one point in time, it obviously created a, a condition that had been going on for many, many years. And it's just something there's a combination of facts that when you actually got down about six feet of the ground, you could actually you put your fist on the side of what was the old building wall line and literally push your hand right through that, what was at one stage four or five bricks thick. The, the brick was very poor when it was put down originally, which is another reason why, um, small history lesson for you, another reason why they, they stuck with the building because it was so poor. We've done a lot of work with uh, different counties Garden County in particular of recent years. Uh, we're working with them constantly on their projects. They had a similar scenario. They had an old courthouse that was bursting at the seams. They were having prison transfer in chains, walking through hallways with next ladies and children strollers and what have you. And the Texas jail standards are sort of turning a blind eye because they knew that it was a problem that it would be fixed at some point in time and they're in the process of doing that. Wilson County's done a similar type of thing. They bought an old furniture building that we converted into the county courts, and now we're converting the floor that was left into district court. And I think the county's been very, very, very smart in, in having a facility that is close enough to downtown environment to keep the business district vibrant. And that was a big thing we did at, at Guadalupe too, is we need to keep the business downtown. Um, there are so many jurisdictions you see. Hayes County is a great example. Along 35, where they built that massive um, new justice center out there. Uh, and it's, it's a, it's a beautiful spectacle to see, and it costs a small fortune. Um, but you know, we, Wilson County isn't, doesn't have that urban sprawl and the, and the commercial sprawl that other areas do. We need to keep it, it's, it's, it's history and, it, and, it, and the integrity of this, of this uh, town you know, intact for generations to come. So we've done the right thing by locating the new criminal justice center and the facilities of that block, but yet then, as soon as the foundation is stabilized and we get the building across, we move as the judge said, move commissioners court, and county court over there and, and have the administrative offices working like they were three years ago. So, back to your point on the monies. So we did the investigative study. Uh, we were then contracted to start looking at how we saw the whole city block work as a, as a unit, as a plan. And it's really unique. I haven't seen one that actually works that well, that we have roads on four sides, so each of the the side blocks themselves can be used for, as we have planned, adult probation. Then we have um, uh, district attorneys. We have the library on the one side. We have the new Sally Port that was in the old cafeteria building. We're building a new law court there. We've also done an overall master plan that actually was it's, it's great when the, the, the master gardeners are going to come in and help out because the flexibility that we have with that block 
is that we can expand that for the next 1,500 years if we need to. We have the large area in the center that we could put two larger courtrooms in there if we want to surround it. It can be all secured off. So we have the ability to expand the, um, the, uh, the holding cell capacity, increase the law court capacity if need be. Um, but the great thing is you still have all that green area in the middle that can be turned into a, a nice garden that, that really sets the scene for the whole development. And where are people going to park? I don't... Well, we've had, we have that lot, we have a lot to the side, off the side where I think the porter cabins were, were, were put. Off the, um, across it'll be off the, the across from the restaurant, uh, south southeast corner, right? Oh, so you're going to use that like a parking yeah. park, park over there and yes, walk all the way around to the. No, it's just, 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 just right there. It's right across the street. Let me hear it all. If you want to, yeah, I will. What I'm saying is, you you still but you still have parking along all four sides that we have. Two, two, two corner wings basically still that can use for elections. Um, the DA's area is going to come up halfway up, but we still have expandable possibilities into the rest of the building, the building blocks there, which are, we already have them. Um, on your question on the estimations, we, we looked at cost data that we have that we did recently on an interior refurbishment project just up the road over in Guadalupe County. Um, and we also then compared that to current industry cost data, uh, looking at per square foot price for what we what we estimate to be. So that's really, until you get into the actual bidding process, you have to base it on something. We could easily have said it was going to be $500 a square foot, but we need to be somewhat realistic in, in what we think it's going to be with our best, best estimate based on current cons construction cost data, which is where that came from. With, with time permitting, Mr. Lewis would like to comment from the District court, I mean, the district attorney standpoint. I didn't even know this was the topic of discussion today, so I apologize. I was here to sit and meet with some friends, but um, I'm the assistant district attorney for those of you that I haven't introduced myself to. So I am in the district courtroom every time we have district court. And have any of you been in district court lately at all? And that's a good thing. You don't want to be there. <laughs> okay? um, yeah, I mean, that's a great thing. But yesterday, we had court. We could not fit everyone in the courtroom to hold court. So as the judge is calling out people's names to make sure they're present on days they're supposed to be there to answer for their criminal charges, we can't even know for sure if they're there because we have people standing outside because we can't fit everyone in over at the jail where we are. And I'm not here, I'm not a politician, I'm not here to speak to the politics of it, I'm here to speak to the administration of it. I mean, and that's my job is to help administer justice. Um, and we have to be able to do that effectively. And we can't the way it is now. And the problem is we have hired more attorneys in our office. We've hired more investigators in our office. We have investigators that are now over in another county being housed over there because we don't have room in our office to give them an office space. Um, and that is an example of how the court system is growing. We have population growth in this county. We, it's going to continue to grow. And so much of it's transit. Yes. I mean, it's not, but I mean, it's people working in the, uh, in the temporary. It, but it, more it, than it, and, and so they're away from families and they got time to get drunk. Right. And even on the same time. And go to the district. That, yes. So I'm, we deal with that. But also people are going to continue to move here. And as that happens, we have more civil cases on the trial. And those civil cases are in district court, too. It's not just me dealing with our lovely felons. But so all of that, you know, I mean, we had 11 pages of docket just criminal yesterday. And there's 10 cases per page. So it's just, it's going to continue to grow. And we have to grow as a county. <coughs> Can I actually and answer that real quick? Um, how many courts do you have currently now? You, how many courts you have do one we have? Like? We have one, and you know the judge and I, he holds county court, we're holding district court, and we have to kind of juggle to make sure not we're not holding court on the, the same court. they're holding court. The JP JP's courts court and also court. family court. You know, it's, let me give you a little bit back up, on, child support back up to that. Um, I'm using one of the examples I'm working with right now, and I've got those at my fingertips. That's great. I'm from Willoughby County. Oh, great. Yes. See what we're doing. You like it, right? I love it. I think it's awesome. Um, 
So one of these what? About twice the population of Wilson. Yeah, okay. About three times. Three times. Okay. So as of last census. Okay. You look at um, what federally they're looking at requiring for courtrooms, both county and, and, and district court. We're looking at having between the district judges are looking at, they're telling us they need almost 15 courtrooms. Wow. We're giving them about eight. We have one. So it, it gives you some idea of, of, and you see the way that the, our county is going. Right. I think our county is going equally in terms of uh, the demographics, equally at the same rate as, as well. It's probably faster. I know we're going to run out of time. The one last point I'd like to make is I wasn't here well, I wasn't here as a county judge in 1993 when the jail was built. You were here when the courthouse was built, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not responsible. <laughs> but, but I would like to say that when they was talking about building the hospital, and I had an opportunity to address the rules. I said, from attending the, the different uh, conferences around the state with the other judges, commissioners, and watching the people wrestle with the need for a jail and what it was costing at that time, I was very thankful that someone before us had taken the initiative to build that jail when they did. And the same with the hospital. The hospital is built now. The cost of it would even, would even be greater today, probably twofold, than what it was just, and it's not, hadn't been that long ago. And this is the same way. It thinks it's needed, it's things that we can get done now, and if it's put off, any one of the three projects can cost what all three of them are going to cost very easily. So that just, I just, uh, if, it, if you use the word beg, I just beg, beg you to get out and, and vote for it because I think, and by the way, this is not political. I'm not running again. This is my last term. But. I know this isn't something we want to do. I just want to know, is it an option? as far as clarifying what will be on the ballot. Do we have the option that at, at the end, I mean, we've already publicized it, of not going to vote at this time and starting that publication over correctly and then going to a vote? I know we don't want to do that, but is that an option? I mean, is that a possibility? Well, on November 5th, they're also having the constitutional amendments. Is that all we're voting on, this and the constitutional amendments? Will there be some local elections, such as the city of Florida still has yeah, some okay. uh, but, uh, On that ballot, and then not on that same ballot. There'll probably be multiple ballots yeah. in the ballot. But uh, the, so, so this, the con uh, this would be this and the constitutional amendments. So then we right, but my question is, when you we said... Can't, we, it's not practical for us to even think no, about it. No, I understand it's not practical. My question is, it could, I is guess it, it could be done, but it moves, it, down, it moves down years. Right, yeah. okay. But it is a possibility. But, but what, I'm, what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to make is it's the time. interest time and the time, interest. and, and the, it's money, time right. is money. Right, I, I understand. And so I, I would just put that out of my head if, they, if, if I had choice. Could, on it, on it, on it, legally, if the CFOs go down, you can't bring it back up for another year. Okay. And I'm afraid so, that so I have to take the responsibility to a large degree to the fact that that's on there. Going back to what the judge talked about earlier when the financial gentleman was there and we were talking about the money and we had gone through talking about projects that we needed to do, he made it clear. He said, look, we're looking at eight and a half million dollars. It's probably going to take all of that to do what we're going to do. But if it does not you and there's money else. left over, you have to allocate that money to something. or you can't do anything with it. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking there wouldn't be much, but it's not going to take a ton to do animal control. And I said, well, we need to consider animal control. And then the next thing, then we're, you know, roads and everything else came on there. And so it was just a matter of if you borrow eight and a half million dollars and if the construction comes in at 8.2, that other three hundred thousand dollars, unless you say name a project, you can't do anything with that money, and that's the reason that they showed up. You know, no one thinks that you're going to have two hundred thousand dollars or three hundred thousand dollars or a half a million dollars and be able to do animal control 
roads and whatever the third one is. And, and, and that's what but your has like the tax rate that it will be, so you can take your your personal taxes and figure what what the difference would be. And Judge, if, if you take the population number that that Howard used earlier and look at the growth rate that the county has had for at least the last two decades, if you use that number in 17 years, it's going to be 2030, and we're going to be in the neighborhood of 90,000 people in the county. So from a growth standpoint, uh, for, for the courthouse needs, certainly for the district court, uh, we're in trouble. And, and, and y'all come by the nursing home and visit with me on that. <laughs> yeah, if y'all want to see the master plan is right here. If you'd like to come by and look at it. We appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are all, all of you citizens. part of the Chamber of Commerce? Well, it doesn't matter. We're county citizens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I realize that you are, yeah. but we don't belong to the Chamber of Commerce. I don't live in Floresville. I live out in the county. And I didn't know about it if she hadn't told me about it. So. Join the chamber. The reason is that we uh, advertise us as much as we can, but our primary service is to change. But uh, we're welcome all citizens. Yeah, well, that's my thing.